Dear students, this is Virendra Kumar M, Associate Professor, Civil Engineering Department, KS School of Engineering and Management, Bangalore, giving you the lecture on the designing of RCC structures. That is, we will be specific to designing of RCC water tanks. First, let us see the uh, course curriculum as uh, prescribed by the VTU. This is the scheme of the subject uh, titled Design of RCC Steel Structures having a code of 18 CV 72. And this is syllabus uh, pres uh, prescribed by the VTU wherein we are having two modules. Module 1 focuses on the designing of uh, RCC elements such as footings, retaining wall, water tanks and portal frames whereas module 2 focuses on the designing of roof truss, plate girder and gantry girder. Now, this is the question paper pattern as prescribed with the VTU wherein two questions will be set from each of the two modules. Each question will carry 50 marks. So, students must attempt one full question from each of the two modules. Next, different type of water tanks. Well, we are having the tanks, classification of tanks such as ground level water tanks and elevated water tanks. What are ground level tanks? These are the tanks which are supported on a firm hard ground whereas elevated tanks are the tanks which are positioned at a elevated level for water supply purpose. Why do we use this ground level water tanks? Well, at water treatment works where we process the water for uh, purification for purpose, we use ground level water tanks and for supplying the treated water, we use elevated water tanks such that water can be supplied at gravity to the uh, supply scheme. Next, this is the typical view of a uh, circular water tank resting on a ground where you can see a pump house located in the front of the water tank. Next, design principles of RCC tanks. The main design principles involved in RCC tanks are design in section by using working stress concept. What is working stress concept? This is a concept where designing is made such that the maximum stresses induced in the materials must not exceed the permissible value as stipulated in the codes, codes of practice. For water tanks, we refer IS-3370 for with respect to permissible stresses. So, this is table 1 which gives you the permissible stresses for concrete in direct tension for different grades of concrete starting from M25 to M50. So, for water tanks, the grade of concrete must not be less than M25, it must be start with M25 and above. Next, table 2 gives you the permissible stress in bending compression and direct compression along with uh, bond stress for again starting from M25 to M50. Great. Next is table 3 gives you the permissible value of shear stresses from M25 to M40 and above for different percentage of uh, tension steel which you have provided in the section, which you have provided in the section and table 4 gives you permissible stress in the steel such as for plain round my steel bars and high strength deformed bars. What are plain round my steel bars? This is, F, this is referred as FE 250 steel and high strength deformed bars are referred as FE 415 steel or FE 50 steel which is the currently used TMT bars. Now, what is the permissible, permissible stress for this? Well, the permissible stress is for my steel bars, it is restricted to 115 MPa. 
and for Fe4 and 5 and Fe5 and steel it is restricted to 130 MPa. Whereas in the case of designing of the working stress method for other structures, the permissible stress for my steel bar is 150 MPa, whereas for Fe4 and 5 and deformed bars it is 230 MPa, then why are reducing these stresses in the materials? The main reason is to avoid the cracks in the concrete section. We are using these very low stresses in the steel to take care of the cracking, to take care of the cracking, in the, to avoid the cracking in the section. Next. Guidelines for minimum reinforcement. Why do we require minimum reinforcement in the structure? These steel are required to take care of the thermal stresses induced due to variation in the seasons, due to variation in the seasons. For example, from summer to winter, the structure will respond to this uh, seasonal changes. So, to so see that no tensile stresses or cracks induced in the structure, we have to provide this uh, minimum reinforcement in the section for which it has, it has been stipulated as 0.35 percent for deformed bars and 0.64 percent for mild steel bars and provided based on the dimensions of the section. If the, any dimension is greater than 15 meters or if the section provided for the section is less than 200 millimeter then we can reduce these values by 0.24 percent for deformed bars and 0.4 percent to mild steel bars, to mild steel bars. Next, let us go to the design example of a water tank. It has been stipulated that design a circular water tank with a flexible base for a capacity of 5 lakh 50,000 liters. The height of the water in the tank is restricted to 3.8 meters in addition to a freeboard of 0.2 meters at the top. Materials used is M25 grade concrete and Fe4 and 5 steel and the permissible stresses must be considered as for the provisions of IS3370 part 2 2009 version and finally it has been asked to draw a neat sketch of the reinforcement details. First of all, before going to this problem, let us talk about what is meant by flexible base and rigid base. Flexible base is a base where there is no connection, there is no connection between the vertical wall and the base slab. So there is a media which separates between the vertical wall and the base slab to see that no rigid connection happens and the base is flexible base is flexible. So, what is the advantage of this flexible base? The main advantage of this flexible base is there is no movement developed at the connection between the vertical wall on the base slab at the connection at the connection because of the hinge action. Whereas, in the case of rigid base, there is a perfect rigid connection between the vertical wall and the base slab to see that the movement uh, develops at the connection. That is the major difference between the flexible base and the rigid base. So, in flexible base, there is no flexure, only force encountered in the vertical wall is only hoop tension. In the case of flexible, uh, in the case of rigid base, the flexure, the movement also will be acting in the vertical wall. Yes. Next. First, data given. Capacity of the tank required is 5 lakh 50,000 liters. So, consider that 1 meter cube of volume occupies 1000 liters. The capacity of the tank in cubic meter is obtained by the, is obtained by dividing, by dividing this value by 1000 which gives you the capacity as 550 cubic meter. Next, 
the depth of the water that is the depth of the water is mentioned as 3.8 meters which is being diluted by small h and the free board at the top is given as 0.2 meters if we add up the two values we will get the total depth of the tank h as around 4 meters next materials used m25 grade concrete and fe 4 and 5 steel so let us determine the permissible stresses for this materials of m25 grade concrete on deformed berms that is deformed berms that is fe 4 and 5 steel Now, this is table 1. For M25 grade concrete, the direct ten stressing tension must not exceed 1.3 MPa, which has been clearly indicated there. If the stress exceeds this value, there is a possibility of development of cracks in the tanks. So, so you have to see that the design must foresee that at any point of time, this value of stress, direct tension stress, must not exceed 1.3 MPa for our M25 grade concrete. Next, yes, permissible bending compressive stress, permissible co bending compressive stress for M25 grade concrete must be restricted to 8.5. MPA 8.5 MPA. So, at any point of time, the stress must not exceed this value for safety reasons. Next, permissible stress in the concrete shear stress. This safety check is done after providing the main reinforcement in the section. These checks are done after the uh, checking the after providing the main reinforcement in the section again based on the percentage of tension steel provided tension steel percentage of tension steel provided we have to see what is the permissible stresses based on the different rates of concrete from starting from m25 to m40 and above yes next table 4 this gives you permissible stresses for steel reinforcement. In our case, it has been stipulated this, that steel is of Fe415 grade. Fe415 grade corresponds to high strength deformed bars. Fe415 steel conforms to high strength deformed bars for which the tensile stress in the member under direct, ten, direct tension Bending and shear must not exceed value of 130 MPa. Must not exceed the value of 130 MPa. Next, minimum reinforcement. This is based on the section dimensions what you have provided. So, These are the values which are obtained from the code books. Sigma CT is 1.3 MPa. Permissible bending compressive stress, sigma CBC, as 8.5 MPa. And permissible stress in the steel, sigma ST, is 130 MPa. 130 MPa. Next, design coefficients, M, modular ratio, M. How do you define modular ratio? Modular ratio is defined as the ratio of the Young's modulus of the materials which are used in the section. In our section, we are use, using uh, cement concrete and the high strength deformed bars. So, the ratio of the Young's modulus of these two materials is calculated based on this expression. 280 by 3 times of sigma CBC, where sigma CBC is the permissible bending compressive stress. After substituting the values of sigma CBC, we obtain the value of modular ratio as 10.98. Next, to fix the dimensions of the tank, to fix the 
dimensions of the tank. Let D be the diameter of the tank in meters and H be the depth of the water excluding the freeboard which is 3.8 meters. Now, equating, equating the expression for volume of a cylindrical container to the capacity. This is the expression for volume of a cylindrical container 5 d squared by 4 into h to the capacity of the tank required that is 550 cubic meter. If we equate this, we get the unknown diameter as 13.57 meters which is rounded off to 13.6 meters. So from this, the internal diameter of the tank has been fixed as 13.6 meters. This is with respect to diameter. Next. Let us calculate the hoop tension and hoop stress developed at the base of the tank, at the base of the tank. Why we consider this hoop tension and hoop steel at the base of the at the base of the tank? It is because due to this reason, if this is your H of the tank, the water pressure will be triangle. The water pressure will be acting like a triangle. Yes. Where the pressure will be maximum at the base. The water pressure will be maximum at the base and it will be zero at the top. Since the maximum pressure develops at the base, we are calculating the check at the base, first at the base. Next. The unit weight of the water W is 10 kilonewton per cubic meter and we have a expression for the hoop tension, maximum hoop tension, maximum hoop tension as W into H into D by 2 where W is the unit weight of water, H is the total height of the tank, D is the diameter of the tank in meters divided by 2 you will get the maximum hoop tension as 272 kN at the base. The maximum hoop tension developed at the base of the tank means at base level, at the base level is 272 kN. That is the direct hoop tension. So, how do you get the reinforcement for that? If you divide the maximum hoop tension, if you divide the maximum hoop tension by permissible stress in the steel, by permissible stress in the steel, that is sigma ST value, we get the ray of reinforcement as AST as 2092 square mm per meter height at the base, per meter height of the base. Means for this bottom 1 meter, for this base 1 meter height, we consider AST as 2092 square millimeter for base 1 meter height. Next. Calculation of the thickness of the vertical wall. Calculation of thickness of the vertical wall T. For this, we are using a derived expression. This is a derived expression. This is a derived expression available with uh, there with risk with, which is which gives you safety with respect to the thickness of the uh, vertical wall. We are equating this equation to sigma ct which is the permissible tensile stress in the concrete sigma ct which is 1.3 MPa in our case. What are the values we are going to substitute in this expression W that is the unit weight of water, H is the total height of the tank, D is the diameter of the tank in meters and I am multiplying this by 10 to the power of 3 to convert it in uh, to, to convert the kilonewton into uh, newtons. 
I am deriving this by factor 10 to the power of 3 such that WHD is being converted to newtons. It be, uh, that, uh, this value is converted to newtons. Next. So, this equating to sigma CT, finally we get the thickness of the wall as 200 millimeters, as 200 millo, millimeters. And thickness of the vertical wall, the thickness of the vertical wall is been taken as 200 millimeters. So, this thickness is based on the criteria of the tensile stress. So, your art lies in this design because if this the condition is not satisfied, if the stresses are more, if sigma city is more, more than 1.3 MPa, then the tensile uh, cracks will appear in the tank structure, so which should not happen, which should not happen in the design. Next, yes, reinforcement details in vertical wall, minimum steel required, minimum steel required. How to calculate this minimum steel required for this uh, section? It is based on the two criteria. One is we have to see what is the maximum dimension of the tank and next what is the thickness of the vertical wall provided because based on these two we are going to design this factor what it is. In our case, yes, in our case the diameter of the tank provided is 13.6 meters which is less than 15 meters which is less than 15 meters. What about thickness of the vertical element? It is 200 mm, 200 mm. It is not less than 200, it is 200 mm. So, based on this criteria, based on this criteria, we have to provide minimum steel requirement of around 0.35 percent of 0.35 percent of the cross section, 0.35 percent of the cross section. Yes. So, we obtain AST required is 0 0.35 percent. So, if we calculate this from the formula, we are getting minimum steel requirement as 700 square millimeter. Since, next, this related to curtailment of reinforcement. What is meant by curtailment of reinforcement? As I told you, water pressure will be maximum only at the base. So, different as you go towards top, the water pressure decreases. When once the water pressure decreases, the hoop force also developed will decrease as you go from base to top. So, no need to provide the same reinforcement what you have provided at the bottom 1 meter right for the entire right because we are wasting the steel reinforcement. We are wasting the steel reinforcement, we are wasting the steel reinforcement. Then why to do this curtailment? If you do this curtailment, we are judiciously using the reinforcement. We are judiciously using the reinforcement so that the design is efficient. So, you see that the design must be efficient. Then how to do this, how to do, do this curtailment? For curtailment, we calculate what is the hoop force developed at every 1 meter interval. We calculate what is the hoop force developed at every 1 meter interval and calculate the steel, what is it required there and compare the steel with the minimum steel and compare the steel with the minimum steel. If our design steel is more than the minimum steel, we will provide the design steel. If our design steel is less than the minimum steel, then we have to provide minimum steel as the required steel in the section. So, based on those guidelines, we have calculated the hoop tension starting from different heights or top 1 meter. Hoop tension is 160 kN for which your the calculated hoop steel was less than the minimum, was less than the minimum 
So based on that, we have provided minimum steel of 700 square millimeters. So if you provide a diameter of 20 mm diameter bar, spacing required for hoop steel is 450 millimeter center to center. Next, again at 2 meters below, the hoop tension is the increases to 136 kN for which with the 20 mm bar is provided 300 mm center to center. So at 3 meters from the top, yes, hoop tension increases, yeah, steel also increases, the spacing will decrease, the spacing of the reinforcement will decrease and the bottom or to bottom 1 meter height that is where maximum hoop force develops, we have to provide 20 mm at the spacing of 150 mm center to center. And what is meant by hoop steel? It is a ring like steel, it is a ring like steel provided all around the tank. This is called as the hoop reinforcement. So in our case, this is a 20 mm diameter ring provided at the entire periphery of the tank, at the entire periphery of the tank. This is known as the hoop reinforcement. Next. Vertical steel. This is again the minimum steel required in the vertical direction where there is no force, where there is no force acting. But however, for the guidelines of the minimum steel, we have to provide minimum steel required that is 700 square meter, that is 700 square millimeter. Hence, providing 12 mm dia bars, hence providing 12 mm bars, the spacing required for this is around 160 millimeter center to center. This is the steel provided to safeguard the minimum steel requirements in the vertical direction. Next, base slab, tank base slab. In this case, flexible base, there is no rigid connection between the vertical wall and the base slab. As such, there is no force transfer taking place from the vertical wall to the base slab. So, base slab is completely isolated from the vertical wall and the base slab is resting on a firm hard ground on a resting on a firm hard ground. So, based on these guidelines, we will always provide a minimum nominal thickness. We will always provide a minimum nominal thickness for the base slab as around 150 mm as a around 150 mm. This is based on the practical guidelines. There is no force in the base slab. Base slab simply rests on the hard ground as it is. Next, for that what is the reinforcement required? For 150 mm thick, we can provide minimum shield requirement as 0.24 percent as 0.24 percent because 150 mm is less than the 200 millimeter as per our guidelines of our minimum shield requirement. For that, so let us provide this 0.24 percent. The steel requirement is 360 square millimeters, 360 square millimeters, 360 square millimeter. Let us provide 10 mm dia bars. For providing 10 mm dia bars, the spacing required is 200 millimeter center to center at both ways at the top of the base lab, at the top of the base lab. Uh, next, let us see the detailing of the reinforcement. This is very, very important. Detailing of the reinforcement is a very, very important step in our water tank design. How to detail this reinforcement? Yes, this is a flexible joint. This is a flexible joint. This is a flexible joint between the vertical wall and the base slab, between vertical wall and the base slab. How do you create that flexible uh, zone? This zone is created by adding a joint sealing bitumen compound by providing a pool of uh, joint sealing bitumen compound at the base with the connectivity between the vertical wall and the base slab is lost. No force transfer takes place from the uh, no moment transfer, there is no moment transfer taking place from the vertical wall to the base slab, from the vertical wall to the base slab. So, so based on this guidelines, so 
the flexible mesh is provided. Now, the reinforcement which I have shown in the circle is the hoop steel, is the hoop steel which is of a circular in shape. And this what we are seeing this vertical steel is the vertical steel provided round the rings. Vertical steel provided round the rings. Okay. These hoop rings spacings are varied as 150 millimeters center to center at the bottom 1 meter height. And as you go towards three, say uh, towards uh, towards uh, the elevated side, the spacing increases to 200 mm, and further it reduces to 300 and 440 millimeter center to center at the top. Now, what is the uh, spacing uh, requirement for a main steel? The main safety checks for spacing is the spacing must not exceed three times the wall thickness. The spacing must not exceed three times the wall thickness for the case of a vertical wall or 450 mm. Three times the wall thickness or 450 mm center to center whichever is less. In our case, the wall thickness is 200, 3 times of 200 is 600 mm and minimum spacing requirement is 450 mm center to center. Based on those two criteria, this spacing is safe that is 450 mm center to center is, is safe at the top. This is about hoop steel and this is the vertical steel provided all round which is nothing but 12 mm diameter bars at a spacing of 160 mm center to center. This corresponds to reinforcement in the vertical wall. With respect to base slab, with respect to base slab, the thickness is 150 mm. The thickness of the base slab is 150 mm, and the reinforcement provided is 10 mm diameter bars. 10 mm diameter bars are 200 mm center to center in both ways. So this is the reinforcement provided at the base slab. We can see this is one along one direction. And this is the what are shown in the dots are the reinforcement in the other directions for the base slab. And this is how the detailing of the reinforcements required for this uh, uh, flexible base tank. Now, what is the main object in this uh, uh, highlights of this design? The main highlights is we have to avoid the occurrence of crack in the crack. Okay. What is the first point, first highlight? On how to avoid the crack, we have to follow the uh, guidelines as given in the code book, as given in the code book of practice. Okay. What happens if, the, it is the, if it is not followed? Cracks will occur, crack will occur and it will not serve the purpose. So this is about the detailed view of the uh, complete designing of a flexible tank, uh, of a flexible water tank. In the next design, we will go to concentrate on the designing of a rigid jointed tank and a rigid uh, jointed water tanks wherein we consider a fix connect fixity or the connective connection between the base slab and the uh, vertical slab so that we can be aware of all the design criteria criteria which are there in practice. So the remaining of the, uh, the design that is uh, uh, designing of a circular water tank with respect to rigid base I will follow up in my next session. Thank you one and all for my uh, listening. Thank you.